Released in April of 2021, New Pokemon Snap was a sequel to the N64 smash hit 22 years in the making. Hyped since it was first announced, it did not disappoint, and speedrunners immediately started looking for ways to break the game to save time. No stone was left unturned, and as glitches started being discovered, the community came to one conclusion. The game was programmed very well. Despite a few out-of-bounds glitches that didn't pan out, there wasn't much in the way of time save, until Obama skip was found. If you're familiar with speedrunning, you know that some skips have very ridiculous and outrageous names, and this would be no exception. Since it skips Obama Snow, the person that discovered it took the opportunity to follow in the time-honored tradition, and Obama Skip was born. But to understand it, we need to look at the game's mechanics. Pokemon Snap is a game that takes place on rails, which means you move from point A to point B with little input on the direction or speed of your movement. Since this is the case, you may be thinking, how do you speedrun a game like this? Wouldn't everyone's time be the same? Not exactly, and that has to do with two things, the mechanics of the game and the system that grades your pictures. First we'll look at the game's mechanics, since they have the most moment to moment impact on each level, and then we'll get an overview of why the picture grading system matters, as the two are intricately tied together in the route for the speedrun. The mechanics of the game are easily understood, as they each offer a unique way of interacting with Pokemon and the environment. You have Fluff Fruit, Scans, the Melody Player, Illumina Orbs, and of course, the ability to take photos. When a level starts, your cart will move on its own. What you need to worry about is taking good pictures while the ride is in progress. So let's look at the foremost mechanic, Snapping Pictures. You can look around the cart in 360 degrees with dual stick control, one to move the entire camera, and one to move the pointer inside of the camera's focus zone. The camera has a zoom function as well, but while you're zoomed in, the cart actually moves slower. So it's better to snap a quick picture when zooming, then switch back to the normal view. The other mechanics are used to elicit special behavior out of the Pokemon, such as eating with the fruit and dancing with the melody player. The only exception is the scan, which is used to get a Pokemon to look your way to increase its directional score when being evaluated, which means it's a good time to look at the grading system. Once you complete a level, you're taken to a picture grading screen where you submit the best pictures from your round to Professor Mirror. The game has a star rating system for each Pokemon that goes bronze, silver, gold, and diamond, with each tier representing an increasingly rare behavior for each Pokemon that you can photograph. Since you can only submit one photo per Pokemon, you can't submit different star levels in the same run of a course, and once you've selected each photo you'd like graded, the evaluation begins. There are five criteria that go into scoring your photos, pose, size, direction, placement, and other Pokemon in the frame. Pose refers to what the subject is doing when you snap the photo, with size and placement being determined by how much of the Pokemon you get in the frame and how close to center it is. Direction is scored based on where the subject is looking when you snap a shot, and other Pokemon adds bonus points on additional Pokemon that are in the frame with the main target. Each of these criteria have a maximum number of score they can give, which is important as your total score from photos is used to unlock new levels to explore and new photo opportunities in areas already unlocked. So how does this all work together for the Any% speedrun? Since the objective is to finish the game as quickly as possible, we are not concerned with taking a lot of pictures. In fact, we want to take as few pictures as necessary, just enough to hit the point threshold required to unlock the next area. This means getting to level 2 research in most areas, and the route has been carefully planned for two things. Getting the minimal number of high scoring photos to hit the research levels, and photographing as many repeat Pokemon as possible. With a tight scoring requirement, this means you have to be precise in the pictures you take, as one photo scoring below what you need can mean a revisit to the area, or taking another Pokemon's picture, which will result in time loss when being graded. The reason we want to get pictures of Pokemon we photographed in earlier levels is because whenever you submit a new Pokemon for grading, there is an animation that plays. And if you're taking pictures of new Pokemon in every level, the time loss will add up quickly. Mechanically, using the zoom feature for extended periods and snapping shots of new Pokemon are the big time losses you can get from player error. But what about things outside of the game's mechanics? Whenever a Pokemon walks in front of the cart or makes contact with it, you will stop until it has ceased blocking your path. 
Since this is the worst case scenario in a speedrun, it's in your best interest to avoid these situations where possible, which is where Obama Skip comes in. During the nighttime run of Shiver Snowfields, you will come across an Obama Snow in the final area that will saunter into your path for a prolonged period of time. This is also a level where you first unlock the boost, so let's see how this affects gameplay, then apply it to the Obama Skip. The boost gives increased speed to the cart when holding a button, which also allows you to get angles on Pokemon that were previously inaccessible due to timing. You'd think that boosting through Shiver Snowfields would get you past Obama Snow before he wandered into your path, but that's not the case. Before getting to Obama Snow, there are two Piplup that block your path, so no matter how fast you get to him, you're forced to watch as he approaches the lined up Sfeel and chases them into the pond. If you go the normal speed, you're missing out on saving time by boosting, so finding a way around this problem was of great value, and fortunately, several people would work on a solution. Martin Scores Easy and Gunlap would both be routing the skip, with Gunlap giving it the fantastic name Obama Skip, and Martin putting it into a world record between the 10th and 15th of May. Now let's look at how the skip is done. When you are stopped at the Piplup, there are a series of actions you can take to stop a Bomba Snow from blocking your path. First, you'll take a picture of the Piplup, then you'll toss a fruit at the line of Sfeel to get them out of your path ahead of a Bomba Snow. Then you'll want to snap a quick shot of Braviary for points and immediately begin boosting, at which point you'll also throw an apple at a Bomba Snow. This stuns him briefly and stops his movement, which is important because if he ever enters his run animation, you can throw as many fruit as you want, but he will continue unabated. The key is to follow up with another fruit while boosting, so you can keep him out of your way and snap a quick photo as you pass. If done correctly, you'll save 8 seconds over waiting for him to move. Thanks, Obama. Since Obama Skip was found about two weeks after the game released, there hasn't been much in the way of glitches added to the run, except for one cutscene skip at the very end. So let's have a look. When you're on the final level with Xerneas, you'll encounter a cutscene that lasts for about a minute once the level is complete. Since Xerneas is an Illumina Pokemon, you need to hit him in his real form with an Illumina Orb before you can get a picture that Professor Mirror will grade, which will also happen to be a two-star photo. Since he moves around the level quickly in orb form, this isn't the easiest of tasks, and Ib would learn this on one particular run in late June. Having missed every orb opportunity to get a picture, he threw an apple into a hole that spawned Xerneas, then quickly hit his sphere form with an orb, causing him to appear briefly. With some quick pictures during the transition animation, he proceeded to the end of the level, and oddly, the cutscene never triggered. He moved to the picture grading sequence, and to his surprise, a Xerneas picture worth one star was able to be submitted, despite not having been illuminated with an orb in his deer form. This was astounding, as the true form only appeared for a brief moment, and the game is very unforgiving when it comes to giving credit for pictures taken during transition animations. The going theory was that the game expects at least a two-star picture from this level, but since the apple in the hole spawn somehow counts as a one-star illuminated photo, the game skips the cutscene since the two-star picture isn't present. This wasn't exactly correct, however, and would be proven wrong in Martin Scoreezy's recent world record where he hit the strat but still encountered the cutscene. So what happened? When you approach the end of a level, the game spawns a teleporter, and on this course, two different portals can spawn. If you take no pictures, one that doesn't play a cutscene, and if you take gradable pictures, one that triggers the cutscene. Since the game doesn't expect any pictures to be taken once it spawns this level's teleporter, if you trigger the apple in the hole Xerneas closer to the end, you have just enough of a window to get the one-star picture and take the wrong teleporter. This leaves two remaining questions. Why is this picture worth one star, and why is it illuminated? We're not really sure on both counts. The only explanation we have as to why the picture might be illuminated is that there may be lingering illumination from when you hit him with the orb in sphere form, giving a few frames where the game thinks he's illuminated, but the one star value remains a mystery. Unexplained phenomena aside, skipping the cutscene is about one minute of time save, and since this is the very end of the run, it's fortunate for runners that this is an easy trick to learn. Otherwise, an entire two and a half hour run would hinge on a trick in the last 20 seconds. Given that Snap is so new, there are likely more skips waiting to be found in the game, and we only covered two of the big ones in the run. 
with plenty of small time saves present in other levels. But there's one skip left to cover, and that's subscribing, so that you don't accidentally skip out on the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.